back with another episode today, but today we are answering your questions about, well, anything. It's an Ask Us Anything special edition episode. Make sure you subscribe and enjoy. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Uh, ah, yeah. <laughs> Welcome yeah. in. Woo! It's a normal day. <laughs> You've been sick for like a month, Andy. Uh huh. <laughs> That's what I wanted to hear. Welcome in, one and all, Thursday, June twentieth. Brand new episode of the Fantasy Footballers. Uh, we are recording this a little bit early. This is part of our. One week off. But not for you. We don't take any time off. You know, we're here every Tuesday, Thursday. You're saying not for them because for we're the here. Yeah, yeah, we're here. You've you got an episode today. Um, Should be a fun show. We're right at the precipice of a new season. I am being inundated with wonderful coach speak at every turn. Every possible inflection and tone of voice from every head coach and offensive coordinator. It's a brutal time. Either confirming all that I believe already or something to be ignored. Right. 100%. And what's cool about... I don't like that. What's what's cool about coach I speaking? I can't hear you. <laughs> Most of the time when you hear something that is the exact opposite of what you believe. Like, they're literally saying something negative about a player you're very confident in. You can actually hear those words as positive. You can hear the comment and be like, I think what they're really meaning here <laughs> is that they're totally into this guy. <laughs> like, it's, it's unbelievable. It's all a big smoke screen. <laughs> yeah. They're making sure that teams don't realize week one, this dude's getting 30%. I see what you're doing, coach. Good good work, coach. I am in a, a very funny situation with some coach speak and some hype and some conversation because here's how my offseason is gone. I have tempered expectations on Kyron Williams. I was the voice of temperance. Is that because you recently heard that Blake Corum is really standing no, no, out? No, 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 no. You see, you ruined the entire story. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. You just oh. submarine the entire story. The reveal at the end of my oh, tale. Oh, I'm sorry. I was, the ten I was the tempered voice months ago before I traded for him because oh, yeah. I believe in Blake Corum. Who was my number one running back on my rankings? Was Blake Corum. Yeah. My number one rookie was Blake Corum. So I had been tempered about Kyron. And then I listened to Blab Blab over here and you talk talk. Blab Blab? Blab Blab. That's and talk. my name? You're Blab Blab. He's talk talk. And both of you were just Kyron, Kyron, Kyron. Yeah. And then I went out and I traded for Kyron. And then I wanted, at that point, I wanted everything I ever said about Blake Corum to be just unconscionably incorrect. And then this week, as Mike just said, it's all positive about Blake Corum. So. That doesn't concern me at all. Excellent. Blab, blab, and talk, talk. <laughs> just, just saying. Like, it, uh, I, I really think that Blake is, will give Kyron some time off. No, I know. But. It, what it does for me, though, is we've we've already talked about it over the off season, but I think it's just it's really reemphasizing it for me. Is no matter what, like if I have Kyron, okay, we don't usually draft insurance running backs on this show. Like I don't, I don't recommend that because very frequently it's just a wasted roster spot sitting there killing you when you're when you're trying to make ads uh, on waiver day, and you're like, I, well, I can't drop this player because. It's an insurance policy. Then when the insurance policy actually gets enacted and the and the player in front of them gets hurt, you're not always 100% sure that that's the real insurance guy. But I but like Blake to me, if I have Kyron, I'm leaving that draft with Blake Corum and if I don't have Kyron, one of my last picks, I'm I'm going to try and leave that draft with Blake Corum. We do know that if Kyron goes down to injury, which he did last year, the opportunity will be huge and the year prior and the year prior, and the offensive line has been upgraded in Los Angeles. All the things you guys blab blab and talk talked about convinced me to go get Kyron. 
Yeah. Kyron will be fantastic for fantasy when he's on the field. I, I, I agree with um with Mike though. Blake Corum is a good fit for the system, is a great uh insurance policy to have there. Like do you guys remember Daryl Henderson Yo, off yeah. the street yeah. because no one wanted this guy on their team. Darnell Anderson. Uh week week seven, the Rams said we got an issue and they said, Hey, come be our starting running back. And then three or four weeks scored over 10 fantasy points and was a top 24 guy in three of those four weeks. It's a good point. You can watch the show right now. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe, click the bell. The ultimate draft kit available at ultimate draftkit.com. Go get in on that. The UDK plus will have the draft analyzer releasing on July 1st. Just made some tweaks to my rankings this morning. And then I imported those into the UDK and you know, we have little updates on the app and on the web that shows where players moved around. And I, uh, observed that you guys had made some changes and so a whole bunch of changes went in there. We're staying water. That's a principle here. We want to adjust, um, you know, certainly from February, March, April assumptions about teams, uh, free agency, draft, camp, OTAs, holdouts, contracts, extensions. So many things factor into the way that you view the season and that's one of the reasons why the draft kit is a digital, always updated uh tool for you heading into august we uh, we grew up in the era of uh, you know going to the walgreens and buying magazines and Which it was fun i love oh, I, I bought them all i loved a good magazine but, but. <laughs> it, it, yeah they don't they don't update them they print it and they print it um about now time of year actually probably already before now time of year and then um well hope someone doesn't get injured yeah so um there you go, ultimatedraftkit.com if you want to get in on that. All right, um, we have a quick question today? We do. Great. Here it is. Dominic says, who is the player that hurt you most or who has hurt you the most in fantasy football? For me, I can't, I can't get past. Um, and I, it's I, funny I, every time. It's fun. Well, for you, yeah. it's hurtful every time for me. Um I don't like I, I I have negative view points towards Jalen Waddle. Um he's not bad. He's 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 a very good player, but he's not CD freaking Lamb, who I had on my roster. I've told this story a couple of times. It's great. It's a great story. I, I was offered Jalen Waddle for CD Lamb uh like two this years, was years ago. ago. This was two years ago where it was uh, you know, Waddle was seemingly better at the time. And I denied that trade. I said, no, CD's going to be a stud. Waddle's good, but no, uh, I love CD. And then you two guys mocked me into making the trade. <laughs> and then I made the trade, and now I don't have CD I, Lamb, and it hurts me every single day. I think I hear, you do wake up every day and think about it. All I hear is, blah, 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 I'm a coward, and I don't have conviction. <laughs> yeah. And I, and I let two bullies... Talk me into doing something stupid. The reason blab you, blab blab. <laughs> the, I don't have conviction. The reason you hear that is because then the player who had CD Lamb traded him to you. Yeah. So, so then you have CD Lamb, which makes it hurt all the worse. So, so I it, have hurt you. Is yeah. that the answer? We are the two yeah. that have hurt you the most yes. in fantasy football. Yes. The answer is Andy and Mike. Mike, do you have an answer to this question? That's uh, like top of mind, even from years past, like players yeah. that you. You just desperately wanted to be great. So, I mean, last year for sure, it's easily Alexander Madison. I thought he would do much better with his opportunity, but it was atrocious. And one, it's like, it's a low key one because the player, like, it, whatever. So it's, it was the uh, Kareem Hunt, who I took in our rookie draft late in the first. And then that turns into a smashing success. And like, Kareem Hunt is on this fast track to being an elite running back, like a top five running back for years and years and years. And then he goes and he, and like, I am heavily invested in the player. I love Kareem Hunt so much. Got it right. The guy's crushing on, on the football field. And then he does his bull crap off the field stuff. And, ha and the, and the chiefs say, no, we're, we're, we're definitely, we're out of this. And they, you know, they, uh, I, was he traded to Cleveland or or cut? I can't. No, remember. no, no. He was fully cut, cut, and then he came back and got a second yeah. chance. Yeah, and but like just the where he was going and my belief in that player, and then like to have the video come out of of the stuff that he did. It was like I that one 
they all feel bad when those types of news pieces come out, but that one was just like a More shot. Personal. It shot to my soul of like, dude, you are my guy, and I'm out here on a microphone talking your greatness and this is what you do to me <laughs> i mean look, obviously yeah. someone had a way worse than me but we all filtered personal through like our, a little work a little uh, work. a lot our worse. our own personal experiences and it was just like dude this this sucks so much so i was so angry at that moment any consideration for antonio gibson in your in your players that have hurt you or do you just feel like Gibson uh, was a top twelve running back two years in a row? I don't know why we talk such crap about Gibson. I don't, he was a ma a major uh, major Gib hit. Gibson was a win for you, <laughs> yeah. And now he is gone away. Yeah. So and now, that's okay. Now, but you still do talk about him sometimes, like he's not gone away, but he has gone away. Well, why? Well, we'll yeah, that was the, the well was DBD. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. I tell I, you what, the, the is it worse if a player is it worse if a player was someone you believed in, didn't deliver for a little while, you gave up, and then they were good? Or is it worse if you believed in them, they did good for a little while, and then you kept believing, and they let you down? That one. Carry on, Johnson. <laughs> that one is the worst. That when you believe, and you are sure, and they just don't get it done. You know, it's like, and you saw flashes. He was like, oh, he yeah. is good. He's going to be great. And then he hurt his knee, and then he hurt his knee again. <laughs> Oh, yeah. But it's better when you, you know, Devontae Adams, and, you you know, it just looks like, you, you know, you, you've got someone that stinks, and then they become great. That, then it's great. You yeah, always forgive That's still a win. I still believe Devontae Adams stinks, you remember? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I was trying to look back in the annals of history. One player that it was really hard to deal with the career going the way that it went was actually Percy Harvin to me. Yeah. Because it was always Percy. like you were right on the cusp yes. and the edge. Yeah. He was, I mean, on the field, Percy Harvin. If, for those who are were around in that time, that dude was electric and could do everything. Like, he was he was Debo Samuel before Debo Samuel. And, uh, like, Cordero Patterson, too, was one that, like, if you had been – we obviously know that if they just made him a running back in the beginning, he would have been amazing. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Amazing. It's really a shame for his career. I mean, he had a great career anyways. He was yeah. so important as a special that. team. He's one of the best returners no, of I, all time. Yeah, but that sentence wasn't what he wrote in his journal growing up. Right. Sure. Like, uh, you're absolutely correct. He was one of the best returners. But he was actually the best returner because he was one of the best athletes that didn't get used right. You know, uh, it just bugs me. Like, we saw him as a running back in his 30s, and he was good. He, if he had five years of doing that at the pro level because somebody had the foresight to yeah, do it. But, I mean, uh, you drafted him to be a wide receiver. He's telling you he wants to be a wide receiver. Yeah. At, at, at a certain point, you have to be like, why aren't you a better wide receiver? You know what I want to see? I want to see a team take someone like Aaron Donald in his prime just be like, you're a running back now. <laughs> just go well, get four yards every play guaranteed, four or five. Just throw these guys off of you. I mean, it's like super old, but didn't the fridge used to get a couple carries here and there? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, isn't there? are there any players that you drafted high in rookie drafts that fall into this category? Hurt you the most in fantasy? Somebody that you, you know, you saved up that pick and you were excited to grab them in a rookie draft and whoops. I mean, Clyde. Yeah. yeah, Clyde for yeah, Mike. Yeah, that's a brutal one. Because Clyde, Clyde you, over Jonathan Because Taylor's. of the draft capital, you were like stuck starting him yeah. for a long time. Oh, he's still on my roster, guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I thought you cut oh, him. Oh, my gosh. Oh, no. He's still there. Yeah. Good for you, Clyde. Who was the guy you – oh, Dylan. You yeah. finally let go yeah. of A.J. Dillon. Um, I think my I, – I think as far as early picks, my only whiff uh, has been Trey Sermon, which was <laughs> – <laughs> whoops. <laughs> you don't even go up to bat. No, On yeah, that that, that's just like it's suspended. But that's not fair. Like <laughs> the 49ers did that. Yeah. 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 All right. Um we have a special episode today. We'll take a quick break. We're going to come back and do some fantasy footballers AMA, ask me anything. And we'll mix some fantasy questions in as well, but we're going to have a good time. Enjoy uh vacation week here and answer anything you have for us. Back in a minute. So why does Antonio Gibson feel the way he feels? 
I don't know. He feels great to me. Antonio Gibson feels feel the way great? he feels because last season, last and, season there was um, and the one before. Uh, I think, but last season was where uh, Brian Robinson seemed like he was going to take a back seat, and Antonio Gibson, or maybe maybe this was two years ago. Um, yeah, it was two years ago. He went from 258 carries to 149 for no reason that we could comprehend. Right. And so it's like you, you, there were a lot of people still in on him. He was young. He was coming off of back-to-back -back top 12 seasons, and he faltered. You know, when, when you when you have a bust year, it carries that with you f in, until you're a superstar again, and he never will be. So it, you just feel it. Yeah, the last two years have been the struggle. But it's in part because they don't let him play football. Well, uh, yeah, he, he does. I mean, he, he does fumbled. often give that ball to the yeah, other team. That was a big problem. Three fumbles last year, two the year before, six in 2021. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you you want to know why the you want to know why the That's fumble numbers fumble. went down to like three and two? You're right. Because half they the stopped work. giving him the ball and half the half work, the half work. the fumbles. You're They're right. like, oh, you know yeah. how you know how we can stop him from fumbling? Put him on the sideline. The last couple of years, when he would fumble, it was like. Oh my goodness! Are you kidding me again? And they were in so many, like, catastrophic. Fumbles. Yeah, I mean, career trajectory wise is what I think I'm meaning to refer to there. It's like his he's come and gone from his trajectory. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But two elite years from a running back is a hit. Okay, sure. Mailbag. <laughs> Mailbag. Mailbag. All right, like I said, it's an AMA episode, so we ask for questions of any shape and size. We'll start here with, um, we got a voicemail? We do. Hey, guys. Chad from St. Cloud, Minnesota. Congrats on 10 years. My question is, if you could go back in time during the early days of the pod, what would you do differently? Also, I can see the future, and Troy Franklin will be a top 24 wide receiver next season. Thanks, That's guys. That's great news. That's you're putting St. Cloud on the map there. Interesting. So he worked in some fantasy analysis. Yes. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> Thank you. What would you do differently? Um, this is going to be our tenth season. It has yet to begin. So we're about to go into year ten. No more upstairs bedroom. Right. Where it began. I think we're about studio three point oh at this point. Yeah. Three point five. I don't know. Um. I've been asked this question so many times, and it feels like maybe the hardest question to answer for me. It feels generic, but it's the like every exactly where you are right now is because of everything that happened in the past. So like, but really for the run of the business, I don't think there's been any catastrophic like oh whoops a doozles. Um, we did have a time period where, it, and, but this was, we had to do it and we look back now fondly, but when you were in it, it was very, very tough. One of the first things we ever offered as a premium <laughs> product, Chase, Chase is laughing because he oh, knows, yeah. is oh, yeah. in old, like the show was much smaller at that time, but it was an ultimate draft review. So it wasn't a it, super it, idea. It was, it was not a like an online portal like the Ultimate Draft Kit is right now, it was a personalized, we did everything by hand. It was a hand. manual draft analyzer. Yes. It, Send us your Yes, team. it was a manual draft analyzer, and it was, fortunately for, for us, it was successful because then it helped keep the business going to get to the point where we are now. But while it was successful, we were still in the midst of like trying to get other work to make sure that we can make this business happen, and it turned into – working from like eight in the morning until two at night for like many, many weeks for all three of us. So it was just, it was to get these things it was back brutal. to you, to get these, <laughs> these things back to you days from now, like, <laughs> like, you know, it would take a week to get, and it got to the point where it was basically, you, they'd send their team in and we would yeah. review their strengths, weaknesses, yep. but it was, a, it, it took so much time. There's no AI to help us. And, what we got to a point where yeah, I when said, a, don't do that when yeah. a new one came in when you know a six for a business yeah. you're like yay yeah. someone just bought another one it was awful it's like <laughs> no we raised the price a bunch we kept trying to stop people from buying it 
Yeah, it was. Um, that's a good answer. But it, I mean, it was great, but it was also that was that was the roughest stretch of getting it, no it was the sleep. grindiest. It, yes. it possibly could have been, yes. and we needed. Yeah. We needed it. Yep. But we could have come up with something better. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the thing. Like, yeah. Could you change? Maybe maybe we, we figure out how to build a non manual product soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was um motivating. All right, YouTube question coming in from Victor. He says, can Jason eat hot dogs when the show starts and then do the mailbag drop towards the end of the show? Is this in reference to your voice becoming – what was the hot dog? It just made him sleepy. I thought that we said something about – why was his voice getting deeper? I thought oh, it was hot dog as related. As I've been doing <laughs> on the, the weight, my voice has gotten more sultry. So maybe if That's I what do it is. eat several hot dogs to start the show – the mailbag drop can be so low. But the the truth is, if I eat several hot dogs right before the show, I'm going to throw up. I, maybe that's what they want. Yeah, that is mailbag. I had a small hot dog bowl today. <laughs> um, what is a hot dog bowl? <laughs> Somehow hot dogs have been the theme of this week. And it's, we had a fan send us, time. I think, 25 hot dogs in the mail, mm -hmm. which are gone. No, 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 they're not gone. Uh, but we do have 25 hot dogs in the fridge. So you could, 25 is enough to get you to the mailbag drop. Yeah, I can do it. All right. Um, here is a two-part question about our segment drops. Uh, the Cisco Kid 91 says, who plays all the guitar riffs for the show? Mike. That'd be me. The fantasy hitman right. He creates every ounce of the music that you hear on this show. And always has. Since the beginning. That was one of the things that he brought to the table. That's right. Right out of the like, gate. It was like, hey guys, I can do this. I can make a theme song. And uh, that was his voice back then. Yeah. Hey, guys. <laughs> it's gotten better. <laughs> and then um, who does the voice drops for each mm. segment in the intro? That is obviously me. That, um, yeah, it's a little more difficult, but it's definitely, definitely Jason. Yeah, it's, it's, it's always been me. And we actually have a video we made showing how mike alters yeah, my voice yeah. into that there was a, well, i didn't show the i couldn't show the secret sauce right because then it would give it up of that it's definitely you that doing it's the definitely drop. me doing it but yeah to so mike does the music i yeah. do the voice and uh andy pushes the button and the voice has gotten easier the more hot dogs you've eaten that's exactly yeah right. i have to do less and less yeah. less less voice pitch shifting yeah. mm -hmm. there you go truth uh, for the fans, uh, IG question from Ryan. Uh, this one says, what did you study in college? What was your favorite s subject in school? Uh, a real AMA right here. Yeah. I, yeah. I just told this story to my son cause I don't think he knew this. I started as a journalism major. Okay. Uh, cause I was, in, I, I was like newspaper sports editor, journalism type of, that was what I wanted to do. Cause I said to myself, Newspapers are the wave of the future. <laughs> but, I mean, in a way, that's still – it has crossover yes, to yes. your current job. Yeah, being a sports journalist, I think that's pretty – Yeah. It's on the same track. Just yeah. And uh, I, went, I went to uh, the University of Arizona for theater, acting and directing, which has its own little yeah. path towards what we do now as well. Yeah, and I started and stopped many schools, uh, but I did graduate with a degree in video game design. So I also have no crossover, <laughs> uh, but it, it, I actually, it actually does have some because I learned how to, like I learned about code. I didn't become a master programmer by any means in that, but I got exposed to it and I l loved coding. Like my brain enjoys it. Like if, I feel like your brain either loves the structure uh, of programming or it hates it. I really loved it, which now I use in Google Sheets and things like that. Did you ever do any school related to your musical career? Because you had a very robust, um, you have robust experience in being in bands. No college education. Gotcha. I mean, was that uh, ever something that you even thought? Oh you yeah, would, no. You would I need. Uh, yeah, uh, I was going to go to a music school, and that was one of the schools that I started to stop. That one really stopped before it started. <laughs> I was out there. I'm going to do this. And then it, was, it did not work out. Did you start? No. Oh, okay. No. No. Um. All right. We do have a fantasy question here coming in about Ramondre. 
Nicholas says, uh, what's your opinion on Ramondre Stevenson? I believe he's an RB1 this season if healthy. David says, why is Ramondre dead in everyone's rankings? Um, we've actually had this discussion in here uh, recently because Ramondre kind of has started out as a bus candidate in our UDK. But then um, I had spent some time over the last couple of weeks looking at him more closely because I was looking at maybe acquiring him in our dynasty league. And I, I've come around to believing that Ramondre is going to have a very good year in this offense. So I, I have a different opinion now than I did at the beginning of the season. Um, I think it's hard when you have teams that – whenever you have a team that was the worst last year, generally speaking in the NFL especially, that team is not the worst the next year. They don't the, – the Patriots don't profile to be – you know, they pro profile to be the fourth best team in their division because they have a tough division, but they have a brand new head coach, offensive coordinator, quarterback. quarterback and I believe that they're building this offense around Ramondre Stevenson. I think he's going to be a fundamental piece of it. I think he had n no hope last year. So, so I have a different opinion. And obviously, um, you know, he's on the precipice of maybe getting a contract. Uh, Gerard Mayo has come out and really endorsed him as their number one running back. So, that's the side I'm on. I do. Uh, RB1 is tough if you're not a winning team. Yeah, because you're not a winning there's team. normally the, one or two that make it out of losing ball ball clubs. Yeah, usually for running backs to have success, you need the touchdowns to come. And th that's the that's the tough part with the Patriots is with a rookie quarterback um, and, and really just the talent on offense being very mid. I, I don't expect a lot of touchdown opportunities. I can easily see Ramondre Stevenson having a great season. He was on his way last year to actually a decent season. If you look at the, you know, he he missed the back end of the year and he started uh, kind of slow, but he he was actually not too bad. The issue, it, it always on this show comes back to Antonio Gibson. It's like right. Gibson is still probably better today than Ezekiel Elliott is today. And so he's coming in to replace with a new system. And last year you had Ramondre, who was really the pass-catching guy. Like, he was on pace for, you know, over 70 targets. And so now with Gibson coming in, there's just a question to me when I'm statting these guys out. Like, are they really going to utilize Ramondre with, you know, obviously a, a new system? They brought in Antonio Gibson, whose specialty, you know, really is he's, – he's a very good pass-catcher. Are they going to give him that opportunity? Because if he if he loses on the pass catching front and he doesn't project to have a lot of touchdowns, I worry. Yeah, it's if Ramondre gets an extension, I mean that will, to me, speak a lot of their faith in him moving forward. And of course, need to see what the numbers are. But it's that right now the Patriots have the best odds to be the worst team. That doesn't mean that they're ne they will end up at that, but that's what sharp people in sports are projecting and we know that over the last six years teams that have had the worst record their fantasy points from the running back position 29th 29th 25th 31st 31st 30th and funny enough you know two of those are the Jaguars where if I'm remembering it right that was like that was the James Robinson years but that's you have to have literally everything of the backfield like James Robinson did and that's my question for Ramondre with Gibson coming in. If Gibson is the pass catcher and Ramondre is the one and two down grinder, maybe goal line, it'll be tough to meet his ADP. Ironically, he was the he was a top 12 running back on a losing team for the Patriots in 2022. So he is no, yeah, he's not, a, not the worst team, but yes, no, a losing team. They were a losing team, yeah. Um so it'll be it'll be an interesting thing to watch. I think that obviously I put my I put my chips in to trade for him. The nice thing is is that the Patriots do have a very good defense. So it's not one of those situations where you're going to get – where he, he, they're not going to be able to continue running the ball. Sometimes you have a bad offense or a bad team where it's just like it doesn't matter what you want to do. You can't run anymore. And th they're going to have close games because of their defense. Healthy games last year for Romandre, he was 11.3 points per game. So he one of the things that kind of uh, I think knocks him down a little bit is he missed the last four and a half weeks of the year. Um, he's RB 22 right now in ADP, which doesn't seem super depressed. So, I mean, he's, he's around, 
uh, David Montgomery, Najee, Raheem Mostert. Pollard. Yeah. Na yeah, you said Najee. Zamir. Yeah. So if he did this coming season what Tony Pollard did last season, you know, how how he produced, how effective, if he has a Tony Pollard-esque season, are you going to be happy? Is that is that something where you go, okay, Ramondre was a really good pick, or Ramondre was fine, or if he's he the was, running back fifteen, you're saying, yeah, if he has yeah, the season great. just like Pollard did, like I mean, yeah, I mean Pollard was marked by in, incapability to cross the goal line, but yeah, if he's the RB fifteen on the year, being drafted at RB twenty two. That'd be amazing. Is that a, that's enough of a – the reason I bring up Pollard's name is because you said in his healthy games last year it was like 11.2 fantasy points per game. In half PPR, Pollard was 11.5. So it was, it was basically right around there. That's – Yeah, you know, if yeah. You I would be thrilled compared to – if I get him in the back of the six, it's RB15, yeah. And over the last three years, the, the ADP running back 22 – or uh, I'm sorry, like the finish of the running back 22 is about 10.2 points. So if you got 11 per game, then that would be – That'd be a great draft pick. All right. Um, Instagram question from Ram. How many people are in the company Slack? <laughs> what? Do wow. they all listen okay. and record listen to each recording live? Uh no, they do not. We don't we don't uh broadcast over the Slack. We do have a system, so of course everyone in the room hears it. But if you're not in the room in the office, we have a large television that just w whatever is being shown on the recording on the YouTube, they can see that while it's happening. So they have the option to watch, but it, like how many people are in the Slack? Tons and, across yeah. our entire company Slack. But as you know, when we're doing the show, we've got like a production channel. And right. that's really just the, the people that are pretty much in this room usually during the recording. You know, all of our writers are in our company Slack, uh, all of our employees. Uh, so I would say total across everything, we're, you know. 50? Is it that high? I think it might be that high. Wow. But, yeah, um, production channel is 11. I, this is a very interesting question. Never been asked that before. Yeah, that's a first. Uh, like very specific. Is that because we have shared, like, screenshots from what's happened in Slack before? Could be. Um. All right. Instagram question from MCShack86. Can Jason wear all white for a show if Marvin Harrison breaks the rookie receiving yards record? Yep. Book it. Okay. If that's 100%. A great, that's a great bet. That's that, a great bet. If it happens, I mean, well, here's the thing. Jason will have a white shirt on. And a white hat. And a white hat. Yeah. I'm just saying, I don't know if you'll have pants. No. This no. Marvin Harrison broke. Whitey tidies, though, too. I, yeah. I completely it has to be full white. 100% agree with that. I No pants, whitey tidies, oh, no white pants. shirt. <laughs> well, otherwise, you wouldn't know if I've got whitey tidies on. Uh, uh, I don't. I'll take your shirt, word for white it. White hat. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no problem. So, uh, 1,486 receiving yards. Let's go, Marvin. He could do it. He could he do it. He could do it. He could. I mean, obviously, it's the record, so you don't expect him to. He shouldn't do it. All right, well, this uh, this question's a keep trade cut comes in from um, Buckeye on Instagram. And during this week, where we've pre-recorded a couple of shows, uh, we're all on taking our families on vacation. I'm... Uh, currently, as you're listening in Lake Tahoe, uh, Jason, uh, I'm not sure what he's doing. Mike, Mike is going on a, a tour of theme parks. Theme parks, yeah. And taking the kids to the theme parks. Yep. This keep trade cut is Disneyland related. Okay. It's so easy, Jason. Jungle Cruise, Pirates of the Caribbean, Haunted Mansion. Keep trade cut, so easy. Pirates of the Caribbean, easy, easy keep. Yep. Yeah. 100%. Uh, haunted mansion trade has to be the trade. Yeah, it's got super value. Look at, uh, I think it's down right now actually, but it is <laughs> because they're doing a huge refurb on it. Disney nerd stuff, but like you in the in Halloween time, they change it to be Nightmare Before Christmas. After, then it's regular. I mean, tremendous value on this ride. And Jungle Cruise is just, it's it's fun, like nostalgic, hackney, fun. hackney dad jokes. I love but, the Jungle Cruise. But it's it's the script, and the script is always the script. Um, I agree with that, I, but it's fun. Yeah, I, I will say- yeah, I'll, it, ra I'll write it, guys. The, Come on. The, uh, the, the trade value of the Haunted Mansion, definitely superior. Has to be the trade. You cut Jungle Cruise. 
But if I have to pick one of those to go on, I would much rather go on the Jungle Cruise. Whoa, real over With, pirates? No, 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 oh, no, 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 over no, 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 Instagram question from T. Hilden says, which footballer would have the best chance on the reality show Survivor? Andy. That's also easy. That's Andy. Yeah. And it's not because he is more survivalist. It's because I've never watched an ounce of the show. Yeah. I don't. What do they do on that I don't show? know how the games are played. They survive. Yeah. Hope one of them does. I think the rest are dead. <laughs> I've never watched. Uh, Andy is a diehard Survivor watcher. Papa yeah, Josh always... Parties. Papa Josh always thinks that he would dominate on that show because he he's also a fan. thinks so many things about himself. <laughs> like, world. I think he could be the first one voted out. World. If we could all strive dare you? to have the confidence that Papa Josh has about just things that you could never do, but he believes in his heart 100% that he, he has do. said <laughs> yes. that he could safely remove a gallbladder <laughs> via watching a YouTube instructional video. So that is where we're at. Yeah. And this is what we get every day in the office. Every day. I don't think Josh would be the first one voted out at all. I certainly don't think he would win. I really, I, I think you could win, Andy. I don't know. I don't, I mean. Wait, there's physical stuff though, right? Yeah. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, do you want to go right now? Boss. You want to go do some challenges? <laughs> Uh, uh, I think Survivor would be really fun. What was his nickname at the beginning of the show? Blab, blab, blab. Blab, blab. blab, blab. blab. <laughs> You're going down. Um, yeah, knowing the rules would help, though, for me and Josh. All right. Um, YouTube question from LaVon. If there was no fantasy football or football anymore, what sport would you play fantasy in? Definitely right. basketball. basketball. Basketball is really it, it's it's a fun sport for fantasy. That uh, not everybody knows. Andy and I basically started our friendship back in high school over fantasy basketball. We were big NBA fans and uh, got in a league together, and that's that's where uh, it started. And that's the only other sports league worth watching. I would actually choose baseball mm. oh, because man. I find. I'm I'm neurotic and would like to check a, things more often. It's a full time job. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like it would, if that's all you're doing, calling to work can't make it in. You sick? No, I'm in a big. I'm, I'm in a I'm in a fantasy baseball league, and I just don't have the. Let time me paint for you, you the picture. Guess what? You woke up. You want to check your phone? You got some points. Afternoon. You want to check your phone? There's yeah. games going on. Mm -hmm. Evening games. Tomorrow games. Yeah, it never ends. Do you want to know you what I to love check about all the NFL? The time. I love that the NFL is not every day. That there's like Almost. the majority. Well, yeah, they're getting close. But like that, the majority of the games is like it. It's that day. It's that event. You know, Sundays are just for football in the season. I I, I need I need to take breaths. I don't want. If, when I see people who that's why you play win fantasy on Survivor. baseball, oh my goodness! It's just like it's like self harm. Um, website question from Alec: Do you change the percentages in the show to be 55! to be fifty five <laughs> so you can use the drop, or are there really that many things that happen to be fifty five? It's a magical number, my friend. No, we've, we've never changed any percentage. If I, I promise, we've you, rounded up. If the song was <laughs> thirty eight. Or sixty-two, or you would hear it just yeah, as much. Yeah, we'd find them. We, I'm just saying, like we, every number is set on this show. We just happen to always hit the fifty-five because of the bit. Now our our staff is claiming that Kyle seeks them out. Yeah, for sure. But there's still we we Do don't you know how many times he's done that. Fifty-five. Uh, favorite dessert. Kyle wants to know. This is a different Kyle. Instagram question from Kyle. What is your favorite dessert? Bread pudding. Uh, you announced it. If bread pudding like is on the menu, you were in the court of a king. <laughs> if bread pudding is on, then then that menu is a good menu, and I will be ordering said what bread pudding. Exactly is bread pudding. It's moist cake. I mean, I don't know why. It's, I don't know why it's called bread pudding. The which marketing sounds is awful. awful. 
but it's just basically it's a will it lower your voice it has successfully lowered my voice okay ice cream and i would say look it's apple desserts but specifically the cracker barrel (laughs) You have always they, had a soft spot. I don't know if it's there because it's been a while since I've I've uh, a a patron at a Cracker Barrel, but they have an apple dumpling dessert that mm-hmm. is, oh brother! We've gone split skis yeah. on that a few times. You've also gone solo on those a few <laughs> times. Yeah, yeah, it's better yeah. that way. Sometimes we're like, you, hey, do you want to split it? And then I say, two apple dumplings. <laughs> yeah, please. we're gonna we'll order two. We're splitting these. The, we're gonna split the bill. You'll split two. Yeah. <laughs> Please cut half of that and put it into my tray. Uh, Frankie wants to know who would win in a three-way anything goes cage match between the three of you. I would. It's, it's Jason because anything goes, Andy and I will still have a line of civility mm-hmm. yeah. that we can't cross What's as, it, the as Geneva, men. The Geneva Convention yeah. stuff? Yeah. 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 It, Jason will see anything goes and be like, well, yeah. That, okay. I want to win. I'm starting the fight with kick to the balls. Start. That's the. That's this the, is what I mean. This is what I mean. Bell rings. Bell rings. And then <laughs> bell rings. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, Jason. Jason. Jason would win. Um, by, by a lot. Um, no. Th- th- see, this is not an okay question. Ask me anything. I. This is really putting it to the test. Jeff Beyer. We're Forty minutes into the show, <laughs> people aren't still listening, right? Should I skip this one, Mike? It's no, we got it. it. It's fine. Has anybody deuced in Deucer's Alley? Let's ask him. Mm. We have respect for each other back here. It's a small space. But has anyone so no. at least farted <laughs> yeah, like in a, Deucer's a, Alley like poop. during the show? Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Cause I can I, I am a I'm a it's fart a small <laughs> amount of respect for each other. <laughs> I'm a fart master, okay? I can almost fart on command, uh, and I, I've got lots of guests. I'm, very, I'm a fart master. Yeah, I'm a f- Keep that quote out for the show. <laughs> and I can say we've done thousands of shows. Thousands. Never? Never one time have I no, farted you have a great, in the studio. For a man who would kick us square in the cojones to start a cage Wait, match, he has I a, don't believe this. Jason has a ridiculous level of fart etiquette. I, I, I can I know when to do a roundhouse fart kick and the time is right or a jump splits fart yeah, kick. Yeah, I mean he is not a he's really not a fart in company man. No, not unless you know it. Small group of company. There, there. You know there are some that are listening that you know my family would go not a fart in company man. That's a lie. But yeah, yeah, is there a point where a relationship with somebody that you're building a friendship? gets to where you they graduate into that company. Oh, absolutely. That's how you know. Do you need them? Love. Do you need them to fart first? No, 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 no. That's the way I tell them I love them. Okay. Let them know. Hey. And check he tells this out. them a lot. <laughs> yeah. He showers them with with <laughs> love. Um all right. You're going to uh, love this. <laughs> all right. This question comes in from Instagram. Fantasy related from Brian. He says, "Why do you rag on week 8 week 18 championships? Yet you include it in your end of season finish." This so, is, they're talking about like every week is included in right. the rankings. So it's kind of included and kind of not. Obviously when when you're programmatically systematically looking at a season, um you want every you want as large a data sample as you can have. The players played that week and so we we need to include that when we're just making good analysis however if you go back to like the uh the truth series we start every you know pretty much new off season with the truth of running backs the truth of wide receivers we go through by hand and we take out the week 18 games that had nothing had, they weren't playing for anything they weren't playing for anything or they played for a half or a quarter or um you know that those those weird situations and and we do take that out for that time of analysis when you look at like our website or whatever, we're not going to just automatically delete a game played. But you can easily select on most of our tools weeks one through seventeen. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, look, the the problem is not every elite player is going to play. That's that's the problem is that you run into a team where you were a great fantasy football player. You invested in whatever the Cincinnati Bengals, and this is the year that they erupted to the point of. They're going to rest everybody. So now on, on the final week of the season, because they have the bye locked up, 
and now you don't have your elite players. So that's just that's why we don't like Week 18. There's still plenty of teams that are playing for things, and they're playing real games, and you so don't remove that. See how they did. Yeah, most of the NFL in, in the final week of the season is exceptionally yeah. Yeah, there's important. there's only one, one bye week now. Yeah. YouTube question from Franco. Do you guys still play any video games? Are you guys still playing World of Warcraft? Oh, that's hilarious. The Me and my nerd club, the D&D, &D, we were talking about World of Warcraft and just thinking about yeah. Dipping, I, it, dipping it's, your toes back in? I've I have thought about it so many times and my buddy was like, dude, I'm I'm thinking about installing. And I'm like, you can't go back. Like you just have to live in those incredible memories that we all built losing two years of our lives to <laughs> to a fake online existence. But it was it was really, really fun. Uh I play a good amount of Fortnite because I play with my kids. I haven't played a video game in in that's not probably true, like you play on. Are you too demeaning years? your phone video games? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I am, those aren't real video games. No, those aren't video games. When you're when you're just like doing a, a toilet game, that's not playing video games. No, uh, playing video games is uh, uh, sitting uh, down to play them. A gaming console or a or a gaming PC like that. That's that's a video game to me, and I haven't played that in like probably two years. I feel like the next video game I'm going to play is Red Dead Three. So like 2026. Oh, that'd be a lot longer than that. Yeah, probably. That'll probably be twenty thirty six. Yeah, we got to get GTA six before yeah. that. Yeah. Um, from time to time, I'll jump on, play some Rocket League, play some hey, games with Papa hey, you Josh. You guys played uh, Hell Divers too. Yeah. Is that the name? Yep, Hell Divers. We were playing a good amount. I jump in with Papa Josh. Papa Josh is the resident gamer of this office. I mean, he he's been known to get out of here early to go play some games. Yeah, yeah. I mean that's he's known to do that daily. That is, uh, he, he has day. a podcast about video games. Yeah, I mean that's. What's fair. your dumb podcast name, yeah, Josh? Yeah, all right. All right. Uh, the Video Gamers Podcast. Where'd you get that name? I don't know. <laughs> it just kind of came to me one day. Also, I need a day off. Yeah. <laughs> Not related. My listeners are about to <laughs> skyrocket. Um. All right, last one here from. Uh, it's from X. If you had to live east of the Mississippi, what state would you choose? Oh, East Coast life, huh? A.K.A. Least Coast. <laughs> <laughs> nice, get them. Well, it's the West is the best uh, for yeah. sure. Uh, I don't. What What's over there? I what's some, on the east? Yeah, what's side over there? of the United what's States? What's over there? Some amalgamation of states. Uh, I would. I would probably New York. If, yeah, New York is the first thing that comes to mind. I. I, I can't fathom living in. I'll go Manhattan. Tennessee. That's east, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. East of the Mississippi. That it is. is. I'll oh, go. Man. I'll go Nashville. One hundred percent. I'm with you. I'm living in Nashville. I loved Nashville when I went. Yeah, man. It's does Nashville have like because the a problem with the got southeast, hot chicken. I know that <laughs> they do. It's delicious. Uh, a, like the southeast, we complain about summer weather here, but they're they, they are they are at the table. They're allowed to complain about summer weather. Yeah. as well. So I mean, I don't. Tennessee's pretty. Like how's Maine? Does anyone live in Maine? It's cold. That's all right. You don't mind it? No, I, I don't. I don't you, think so. Do you like lobster? No. Well, oh, well, that's, lobster guy. Really you can't good. go to Maine and not eat oh, lobster. Crap. Uh, but it, but it does seem to fit your like. I'm just barely. I just want to barely be in the U.S. Yeah. yeah. Up at the tippy top. That'll be great. Um. All right. That is gonna do it for today's <laughs> episode. Thanks for all the wild questions. Hope you enjoyed the show. We're back. In town with fresh episodes, early breakouts and sleepers, early values and busts next week. You can always catch an extra episode of the show. We've got uh, Borg and Betts taking care of the Footcast. So if you're a member at jointhefoot.com of our community, they'll be handling the Footcast. And that will come out today, the same day you're listening to this show. So that'll do it. Thanks for listening. Check out the Ultimate Draft Kit as well, ultimatedraftkit.com. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.